Hey guys, it's Level Up Design here. I know it's been a while, but Gotcha Gotcha Games got into contact with me recently and they wanted to know if I would review their game on my channel, so I said, yeah, why not? Uh, for the sake of transparency, I've been given a review copy of this game for the purposes of this video. If you'd like to purchase the game, then I will leave a link down in my description. But without further ado, let's get into the review of Reality Mines. Reality Mines is an RPG Maker game made by Yutaro Tsuyuki, and it's being marketed by Gotcha Gotcha Games. It's about a guy and a girl that switch bodies. Okay, look, that does happen, but this game is about more than that interesting quirk. Its narrative explores ideas such as motivation and determinism, what drives us to make the decisions we do in our day-to-day -day lives. I can't say too much without spoiling some major story points, but an example the game uses to describe itself is having the angel and devil on your shoulder, telling you to do the good thing or the bad thing. Now one of the biggest things I want to bring up about this game is the art. The art for this game is fan flippin' fish fillets tastic. All of this game has custom art assets, and it goes to show just how much effort the developer put into making this game. This was developed by a solo dev, but I would love to see what could happen if this game was expanded upon and made by a bigger team. I don't have much more to say about the art, it's just really good to see RPG make a game with completely custom graphics. Now, the story I think is awesome, and as I said, I can't get into it too much without spoiling it, but one flaw I would say with this game is in the way it delivers exposition, and it suffers from exposition dump. There's a part at the beginning of the game where the two best friends are using each other's last name as a joke and saying like, I don't like it when you call me by my full name, haha. <laughs> but it's a very obvious telling to the player that, hey, this is the character's full name. Shortly later on, there's a character's mother who walks up and just starts talking about a village has been recently attacked by a mage, and this is the mage's exact name, and it's a little girl in a black robe. Like, the mother doesn't need to be saying any of this, there's other ways you could deliver exposition without actually just telling the player the exposition. And it's the same right before the first fight of the game. You have the two main characters sucking up to each other by saying, you're, you're very skilled with swords, so you can attack enemies very well, but I'm not that skilled with swords. And the other character saying, yes, but you're very skilled with magic, and I'm not very skilled in magic. This doesn't need to be flat out told to the player. The player can just experience that in battle. But it just sort of sounds like you're the best, no, you're the best, no, you're the best, but they're not talking to each other, they're talking to the camera. This being said though, after the exposition is delivered and the characters are just naturally interacting with each other, the dialogue's great and the way they interact with each other's great. Uh, you can tell distinct personalities between the different characters, but it's yeah, just getting over that little bump of exposition. After that, the rest of the story is awesome. I do just want to point out the soundtrack as well though, so if you just have a quick listen to this soundtrack, I'll play a couple of sounds for you. Now I'm not quite too sure whether this is all original music, whether he's commissioned it, or whether he's got the licenses from somewhere else. But yeah, th this soundtrack really adds to the feeling and atmosphere of the game. I I'd almost play it for the soundtrack alone. I do think the battle system is quite interesting. I like the way that you've got the chain link, so if you have two characters using a fire spell for example, then those two characters will link their spells together afterwards and perform a stronger attack. And it's the same if you're using defensive spells or recovery spells, all of that sort of stuff. But I found the combat, you know, adequately challenging. Challenging enough that it's not too hard, um, but it's not insanely overcomplicated that you have to spend ages trying to learn it. It's a nice simple combat system that keeps you engaged. So, in conclusion, I'd say Reality Minds is a pretty interesting game. It goes for about five hours. You can add an extra one to two hours if you do all the subplots. For a four to five hour game, the story is really interesting. And once you get past the bit at the start where there's too much exposition and it gets into the actual story, it's actually a really entertaining play. Uh, it is available on Steam, and so I'll leave that link in the description. 
And so there it is, that was my first review for an RPG Maker game, I haven't done a review before. I've got two more videos that I need to make, because um, Gotcha Gotcha Games has reached out to me with more videos they want me to make in games they want me to play. Hopefully I get better at making review videos, capture the correct footage. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.